Tech. Hi. Hey Booktube, welcome back. I'm Winx and the ink I'm talking about today is Luminescent Threads Connections to Octavia Butler. Published by 12th Planet Press, this is a collection of original essays and letters from contributors with a special connection to Octavia Butler, a woman who was not only a pioneer of the science fiction genre, but who paved the way for future African American writers and other writers of color. I'm so honored to be joined here today by the editors of this collection. Here with me is Mimi Mondal and Alexandra Pierce. Um, and to give these two a better, proper introduction, um, Mimi was born in Calcutta, India. She is a 2015 recipient of the Octavia E. Butler Memorial Scholarship at the Clarion West Writing Workshop and the Poetry with McCready Prize in 2010. Her stories, poetry, and social commentary have appeared in The Book Smugglers, Daily Science Fiction, Podcastle, Muse India, and Kindle Magazine, among others. Her first collection of stories, Other People, is forthcoming from Juggernaut Books. Alex is editor of the award-winning Letters to Tiptree and co-host of Hugo Award-winning feminist science fiction and fantasy podcast, Galactic Suburbia. She is also a part-time teacher, blogger, book reviewer, and columnist for Tor.com. So, super excited to have you guys on my channel. And I want to give an extra big thank you because, um, unbeknownst to the viewers out there, uh, we have gone through the ringer with getting this together. Not only <laughs> did we have to deal with um, time zones because I'm on the west coast of the United States, Mimi is on the east coast of the United States, and Alex is in Australia. So finding an hour of the day that was actually a reasonable time in all those three places is a little bit of a struggle. And on top of that, this is the second time we are doing this interview. Uh, so the first time we did this, um, I recorded it all, and I managed to do so without any audio. So um, thank you both so much for dealing with my shenanigans and coming back to do this again. So Alex, can you tell me what inspired this collection and also what inspired the name of the collection? Uh, so as you said, I uh, edited Letters to Tip Tree a few years ago, uh, which was about honouring Alice Sheldon on what would have been her 100th birthday, and it seemed to strike a chord with both the people who contributed to the, uh, to the anthology and to readers as well, and so I started thinking about what other uh, awesome female writers would I guess, um, elicit the same sort of response from people and would be I suppose worthy of such a tribute, which is a bit of a silly way of putting it, but anyway. Um, so uh, Octavia Butler just seemed obvious to me, not because she's in danger of being forgotten, which I think sometimes Alice Sheldon is, was, uh, but because she has been just so important to such a range of people, uh, both during her life and in the last 10 years or so since she died. Uh, so that's why I thought it was worth, or we thought it was worth doing the book. Um, the name itself is uh, actually uh, a line from Butler's first novel, Pattern Master. Uh, there's a moment where the main character starts to see the, the, the psychic connections between people and they're described as luminescent threads. Um, and I'd read the book and not actually picked up on that, but um, I was reading an article by... Sandra Govan, I think it was, and she opens her essay with that paragraph from the book, and it just struck me that um, it was just so appropriate to describe the relationships between Butler and the people who wrote for us, uh, but also more broadly the connections that are suggested between um, all of the different people who have been influenced by Butler. You know, it's not just Butler at the centre and then lines connecting out to other people but it becomes more more of a web so hence uh, uh, the plural there so that's very cool yeah i like that um that connection um and i haven't actually read pattern master so now i'm extra curious to do so <laughs> um so mimi um is there an overall con um, an overall message in the collection or any specific things that you found yourself looking for when you were going through the different um essays and letters that were submitted um, so I, I came in later into the project, and I'm um, sorry about the camera. I came in later into the project because I, one of the earlier editors dropped out, and some someone asked me if I would be interested in working on a project like this. And 
probably because I was an Octavia Butler scholar at Clarion West before. So I came on board in, I think, around November 2016. And I, I mean, November 2016 was not a good time for a lot of us in America. Right. And I, I'm, I'm an international student. I, I am doing an MFA and I had just started looking for jobs. Um, I felt very disappointed in everything. Like I, I even felt very disappointed as a writer. I didn't know what else, you know, what to write about in a world that had just like assertively proved its belief in so many things that I did not believe in. And so when I started working on this project, I didn't feel like I had a great deal of energy to start working on a project, but I also had enjoyed Butler's work for so long. And I I, I enjoyed Letters to Tip Tree, Tip Tree. So I thought, I mean, you know, let me give this my best shot. And there was so much political conversation. There was so much assertion and resilience in those letters. So much honesty, so much strength and not giving up. I really absorbed all of that through January, through February. I wasn't going through a great time and it helped me a great deal to read those things. That's so great. Alex, how did you actually go about originally sourcing the works that you were going to use in the collection? Uh, we came up with a, a dream list of people that we thought might be interested in writing about Octavia Butler. So we started off by uh, sending those people emails to say, this is our project, would you be interested in writing a letter or an essay or what have you? Uh, so I spent a lot of time um, sort of source going through, um, say, for example, like the, the book Strange Matings, which was um, an anthology also in honour of Butler in a, a, a different uh, format from ours, um, yeah, looking through, uh, you know, websites about Butler, looking at the Octavia Butler um, legacy website and those sorts of things. So, yeah, we had a dream list and approached a lot of people to write for us. Um, and then we also asked those people to pass it on to people that they knew. Um, again, because I'm in Australia, I don't have the all of the connections to especially the American um, societies and I, I've, I've found out of all sorts of different writing groups in doing this. Oh yeah, I'll pass this on to my, you know, North Carolina writing group and those sorts of things. That that's been really interesting. So we asked people to use word of mouth, and that's worked really well. Uh, and we also put out a public call through the Twelfth Planet Press website and Facebook page, and um, tried to disseminate it as widely as we could on social media to get as broad a um, uh, an awareness of the project uh, out there so that you know, again we could get to people who we don't automatically have connections with. Power of the internet. <laughs> Mimi, uh, did you have a favorite piece that was in the collection or were there any memorable ones that didn't make it in? Um, I have a lot of favorites. I mean, now I don't know if I should take names and call one, right, one piece of them. I don't know, maybe More this is like asking the other one? what your favorite child is. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, but I, I, I totally wanted to talk about the funny antagonistic piece. Yeah. The one which is by a gentleman, I guess. And it sounded like he was mansplaining to Octavia across, like, you know, uh, beyond her grave, where she's he's like, you've done some things right, but I still don't approve of this and that, and you haven't done these things right, and I don't agree with these things. And it was very conversational, and it was so clearly mansplaining. I, it could have been a piece for McSweeney's, you know? <laughs> and I wondered if that was intentional, if, you know, he was playing the role of the male person who talks like that, talks down like that to female authors and more or so black female authors and I we couldn't figure out if that was the case and I made a case for including that in the, in the anthology just as an instance but because we couldn't figure out whether it was parody or real and yeah. would have probably been very inconvenient for the person concerned if it wasn't parody I don't know yeah, I just can't even imagine. <laughs> I 
Okay, so this one is uh, for both of you, but um, I'll start with Alex. Um, what are your own connections to Octavia Butler, and do you have any favorites of her work slash things that you mostly recommend from her? Uh, so um, I've read a few Octavia Butler novels probably even eight or nine years ago now, something like that. But So she was sort of on my radar as I got interested in um, feminist science fiction. Uh, you know, she often gets mentioned in that context. But in reading through particularly the letters that have been contributed here, I've really come to a realisation that my own connection was very much an intellectual one, that she fits into this, I guess, chronology of, you know, awesome writers but my interest in her was in in her works and what she's saying, but I certainly didn't feel a, a personal connection to her. I'm white, I'm Australian, I never met her, all of those sorts of things. Um, so for me doing the book, it's been deeply fascinating to see the incredible emotional connections for people. Some of them didn't meet her, um, but nonetheless they get that connection from her work, which I found really quite humbling actually and quite delightful, as Mimi was saying before, the, the, the political and the passionate side of the letters, um, that a writer could inspire that is just it's fantastic. Um, in terms of what I recommend to people, it really depends on what they themselves are interested in because she wrote in, well, I've read 10 of her novels now, they're, they're so different. So if you're interested in vampires, then fledgling, fledgling is bonkers. It's, <laughs> it's such a fascinating take on, on vampires. Um, if you're, if you're willing to read something like The Handmaid's Tale at the moment in America, then Parable of the Sower and Parable of the Talents are uh, a wonderful complement to that. Um, probably my favourite, though, is the Xenogenesis trilogy, um, which is Dawn Adolf Hood writes and is it Imago or Imago? I, I don't think I've ever said the word out loud. I think it's Imago. Anyway, yeah, um, <laughs> because I love... <laughs> Uh, you know, spaceships and aliens and the human condition and it's it's not straightforward at all. It's controversial the whole way through. Um, yeah, that that's my favourite trilogy. And she never wrote really long books and I really like that in an age of epic tones. And sometimes I like reading 600 pages, but sometimes it's really nice to read 280 pages and that's a story. <laughs> Very true. Yeah. Um... Okay, Mimi, same question. What are your connections to Octavia Butler and do you have a favorite of her work? Um, so I started reading Butler's work really late. Um, so I, I grew up in India and I've lived in India for like most of my life, I mean, up to my early 20s. And if you're not in the United States, if you're especially in a country that's that far away, it's very hard to get the context of an author like Octavia Octavia Butler because sometimes it doesn't even transfer like we grew up reading very white people fantasy and the only Octavia Butler I read was Blood Child in an anthology as a child and it mentioned that she was an American author and clearly I could see her name was female it did not mention she was black and it did not mention her as I don't know, I mean, anyone whose struggles or life was more extraordinary than, I mean, clearly it was a best of connect collection, so everyone in the collection was good, but it didn't mention that her life or struggles may have been different from, say, the other white writers. So I didn't even pick up the fact that she was black or she had a different experience, and... When I applied to Clarion West, I mean, I, did, I, I didn't even know anyone else who'd come to Clarion West before that. Like, I knew some people's names. So I knew there was, an, there was a scholarship for this very well-known author, and I applied for it. And a lot of her writing I've read in the last two years after I became the Octavia Butler Scholar, and I got to meet other people who read her. And I, I was, I am planning to teach Bloodchild to a class again because I keep thinking that I mean that's a book that's a story that a lot of people can probably associate with without bringing in the larger questions of race or the other uncomfortable things in her stories which is interesting because there's a 
there's so much discomfort in that story about you know gender and humanity but in science fiction people seem to be more uncomfortable at the moment you start talking about race but one of my favorite works is also fledgling i mean i love vampire fiction and i had grown tired of reading the same the same vampire stories after a point the same race the same class then pretty much the same stories happening in the same places and i love that novel and it told me a lot about what people like me non mainstream people can also write so um and i wanted to i asked this in our last call but i definitely wanted to include it again um your suggestions for um other uh good stories about vampires and monsters that people might want to read that aren't just some white guy in the victorian times that turned into a vampire oh my god um <laughs> i i read, like reading zen cho who is a malaysian writer who lives in london and she writes about mostly asian monsters in modern but also mythical times and they're very different from western monsters i mean monsters overall come from the human mind so there are clearly certain similar patterns but i mean they're not the overdone boyfriend vampire person perfect are there any other um topics about the book itself that you guys wanted to cover or the process of putting it together i guess for me as i said the the intensely personal nature of many of the store of many of the letters was really interesting i mean we got that in letters to tiptree but that was so different because most of the people who wrote had no actual personal connection to tiptree you know it was a connection to her, her life through, which they'd read about through a biography or to her fiction whereas um with this there are so many people who had met her or had benefited from the clarion west scholarship and clarion scholarship in her name and those sorts of things so the willingness of authors to be personal to be um really quite uh vulnerable in the letters that they're writing um it really struck me and i'm really uh, pleased that they felt comfortable to do that for us as editors and for 12th planet as a as a publication that um i guess they trusted us to look after their words well or something like that um yeah i've i've really liked that what what i learned from this from working on this anthology was how much personal once again how much personal effect octavia butler had had on people's lives i mean i remember this term called literary citizenship that i think roxanne gate talked about for the first time and it's it basically means that you don't only stop at your writing or the work that you're doing in the literary community but you also become you know a person who helps in the circulation in the in the positive circulation of the community you keep your I don't know I mean it's about responsibility it's about passing on the good vibes and she did so much of that I mean a lot of us as writers are probably not good communicators you know in person mm-hmm. like I I am very introverted and I have depression and I constantly have to struggle with contacting people letting them know I appreciate them letting them know I love their work so that was a great lesson and that was a great inspiration to keep doing that to remember the community beyond your own you know laptop and your work yeah so i love that can you tell folks where they can get their hands on digital slash physical copies oh uh, absolutely and unfortunately the official release that has had to be pushed back a little bit probably to um actually we don't have an exact date yet but there's just been a few hiccups with the actual layout but nonetheless soon um so uh electronically it will be available from all of the usual places um Amazon, Kobo, Google Play, Smashwords. I'm sure there are others Barnes and Noble I think goes through Smashwords. So kind of the normal places um to get a hard copy at the 12th Planet Press website. Although if you feel like ordering it through your bookshop, please feel free to do that too to spread the word. <laughs> Awesome. Um and uh Mimi, is there an expected release date for your uh story collection? 
coming out from India, so that's that's actually it. I only have sold the Indian rights, and mm-hmm. they come. They've published two stories from the collection yet. It's a digital publisher, but they only work in India. Okay. So right. I'm still writing it. Actually, it's not done. Oh really? So. Oh cool. Okay. Well, I guess I will not put that on the calendar just yet, but I will keep an eye out. <laughs> um, okay, well, that's all of my questions. Thank you guys again so much for doing this, especially doing it twice. <laughs> um, and I'm really looking forward to reading the book. And, I, yeah, I will see you guys both around the Internet, I'm sure. <laughs> cool. Thank you so much, Wings. This has been great. Yeah, this is really yeah. awesome. All right, well, I will talk to you guys have later and have a good have day. Great day. Have a good different day. Yeah. <laughs> Monday's great. All right. Bye. <laughs> See ya. Hey guys, I just wanted to give a little follow-up info before I wrap this video up. I did find out that the release date for Luminescent Threads has been pushed back a bit. It's expected to be released now in August, but you can go and pre-order it on the 12th Planet Press website. I have a link to that down below so you can go and check that out. Again, many thanks to Mimi and Alex and the folks at 12th Planet Press for coordinating this whole epic interview video. It was so fun getting to do this for my channel and hopefully I will have more opportunities to do similar videos in the future. I would love to hear down in the comments if any of you have special connections to Octavia Butler or her works or if you have any favorites of her works. I think right now my favorite is probably the Xenogenesis series but admittedly I need to read a lot more of her stuff so um, this is definitely motivating me to do that. All right thank you guys so much for watching. Please like this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you'd like to see more, and go check out 12th Planet Press if you'd like to pre-order Luminescent Threads. I hope you all are having a wonderful week and I will talk to you soon. Bye! I'm also loving your cat in the background. Oh she I did not even realize she was there. She is my my co-host. That is most of it. I have another one somewhere but I think she's out sleeping on the kitty tower. <laughs>